Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'm going to talk about a phenomena which is not known about by the overwhelming majority of people, preppers and survivalists included, post apocalypse talkers and all the rest. Most people are not aware of this major factor which has the potential to make matters insurmountably worse after the collapse of industrial civilization. So let's get to it. All right, so once again, I'm going to post links in the description. Paul Beckwith talks about this concept in great detail, although you really have to have a lot of patience with him. He's a professor, he's a nerd, so he talks straight facts, no drama, no emotion, no passion when he speaks, just the facts. And that's somebody who we need in order to get the most credible information possible. So as many people know, after September 11th, the overwhelming majority of airplanes were grounded for security purposes and there was observed to be a significant spike in the average temperature over North America to the tune of about one degree. Now while that might not seem like a lot, bear in mind that at only two or three degrees above pre-industrial levels or average global temperature, mass agriculture would not be sustainable. There would be massive food riots, famines, and subsequent die-offs. So the spike in temperature was attributed to the fact that all the planes were grounded and thus there was no contrails, condensation trails from commercial airliners, which have the effect of actually reflecting some of the sun's radiance, a significant portion of the sun's radiance. And so many people observed the skies to be noticeably clearer in the days following September 11th while these flights were grounded. And of course, the intensity of the sun was much hotter. Now to cut to the chase, there's a phenomena called global dimming. Global dimming happens as a result of the aerosols and the pollution that is released by industrial civilization and that has the effect of actually reflecting some of the sun's radiance. So these sulfates and aerosols, things that are the consequence of coal production and just industrial civilization in general, the exhaust from your vehicle, there's a paradoxical effect in that these things at once cause a greenhouse effect in that they trap heat from escaping the atmosphere, but at the same time they're reflecting a lot of the sun's light so if industrial civilization were to cease altogether not just the planes but even a predicted 30 percent reduction in industrial activity would cause significant increase in global temperature above and beyond the existing trend towards warming temperature so depending on the projection you look at now we are between 1 to 1.5 degrees hotter than pre-industrial levels due to greenhouse gas emissions and as a result of this, uh, another degree or so, and we are certainly going to be moving into some trying times. An easy analogy to understand the paradox here is that imagine you were shot with an arrow. It sucks, you're, depending on if it's in a vital organ, there's a good chance that you're not going to exist. Even if that arrow gets removed, now you're going to bleed out even faster. So while we are pumping out all of these greenhouse gases, which are having the impact of warming the planet, if we were to cease activity and all of the sulfates and aerosols fell out of the sky, now you have clear skies on top of the already established global warming trend, then you have a much more significant spike in temperature. So electromagnetic pulse. Imagine a world where the temperature went up another 1.5 degrees on average. Now I've heard estimates between 0.5 to 3 degrees. Paul Beckwith has a more conservative estimate of what, what it might be leaning more towards 0.5 or 1 degree which would be a, a persistent increase on top of what we've already seen which would lead to catastrophic uh, crop failures, the inability to grow food on a massive scale which of course would already be compromised by the lack of fertilizers, the lack of modern farm equipment, the lack of herbicides, not counting the inability to cool the spent fuel rods in the many nuclear power plants around the world. That's another issue altogether unto itself. So we find ourselves at a junction now where if we were to pull that arrow out, we're going to bleed out faster. Another way of looking at this is somebody who has been, you know, jammed or impaled uh, in an automobile accident and you know once they pull them apart from the car they're gonna die basically because 
th that's all that's holding all of their organs inside or together. So this goes back to a quote that was used in a previous video that civilization is like an airplane that can only exist if it's moving forward. Now there's one positive effect to this whole global dimming thing which can partly mitigate the effects of the increasing trend toward warming that it gives us more options to slow down the greenhouse effect in that these forest fires that we're seeing are actually going to have a global dimming effect. So the more forest fires, the more volcanic activity, uh, the more reflectance and particulate matter that goes into the atmosphere is actually going to reflect the sun's radiance even more. So then this can actually mitigate the impacts of this trend towards warming. Not permanently because there is known to be a 10 to 15 year lag in terms of a temperature rise and increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which is currently 400 parts per million which is significantly up from the baseline which is around 225 parts per million more precisely it's probably around 410 parts per million right now because it's been going up pretty much as predictably as moore's law since the 1950s when things really kicked off post-world war ii industrialization and the population booms the baby boomers now it is projected and this is a conservative estimate based on previous data that we're going to hit 500 parts per million within 50 years and that's going to lead to a rise of temperature up to three degrees which is going to cause weather like we've never seen it before it's going to cause mass migrations it's going to drastically disrupt global food supply you're going to see famines you're going to see riots you're going to see a lot of conflict ensuing around the world if we even make it that far now bear in mind these are the best case scenario projections this is not even taking into account the arctic sea ice melt and the effect that that has on reflecting the sun's radiance and the other various feedback loops which are going to create a perpetually warmer planet i'm going to post an article in the description which goes over 19 of the major positive feedback loops which are self-reinforcing which are going to expedite this rapid and what some people are calling irreversible uh, climate change that we're going to be seeing in the future so this is a phenomenon that you never hear about or see in any post-apocalyptic film probably because it's too complicated for the general public to understand and you also never see the the nuclear power plant going offline and all the spent fuel rods not being able to cool those because that would make for a pretty uneventful movie because quite frankly nobody would be able to survive so this is just another challenge that you are going to face if we ever did endure some abrupt collapse of industrial civilization the absence of civilization is going to create drastic climate changes september 11th was proof that even a minor change in industrial activity is going to produce very significant and apparent results in terms of our climate. So imagine now ceasing the better part of industrial activity and what effects that is going to have. This is just one of the many extraneous variables in the post-collapse environment that you're going to have to deal with, particularly if you're a horticulturalist and you plan primarily living off the land and not on stored food supplies. I still have a lot more research to do in this particular area. And sure enough, every time I make a video like this, somebody else points me in another direction in which I learn a new significant piece of the puzzle. So feel free to do that in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video and you found it informative and useful. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through canadianpreparedness.com or bugoutroll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.